Hello guys and welcome for another video in which I will share with you the one and only heavy fire stuff build which includes the flamethrower. I know that many of you will say that this is ridiculous and stupid at the same time and the flamethrower is a noob skill, which I agree with. However, in order to perform on a good level, you still need to have the base understanding of positioning and how to fight in PvP. Otherwise, you will see yourself outnumbered or not on the correct position, which will most likely lead to your death. So without further ado, let's jump into the details for the build and let's see what is the core itemization and abilities in order to make that work. Let's start first with the armor needed for that build, as with the latest patch we received, the changes which were extremely heavy gear friendly are super important. For those who don't know, the frigid down set from the new ice expedition is now upgradable into the gypsum clean. This means that you can create your own best in slot gear with whatever perk you want as a third one as long as you have the set and the pieces from it obtained by farming the mutated expedition. Another fun fact is that the dungeon is now set for mutation for a second week in a row, which means that if you didn't manage to get it on the first one, you will still have another 35 tries to do so. The set contains 5 heavy pieces and each of them is already locked with Elemental Aversion and Enchanted Ward. For those of you who don't know, those two perks are illegal because they are sharing the same perk bucket. They are basically the two best perks that you would like to have on a heavy flamethrower build due to the fact that you will not use that many dodges in order to proc shirking fortifications. Since now you have the chance to roll the third perk on the items, the best fit would be a weapon perk or a conditional perk for extra protection against specific type of damage. And with that said, your armor pieces should look like this. Heavy headpiece with enchanted ward, elemental aversion and a flamethrower perk. For a chest piece we would like to have the void dark plate artifact from the barnacles expedition. For third perk I used flame conditioning but feel free to put whatever you like. On the hands we will have enchanted ward, elemental aversion and the burnout perk. For pants we would like to have enchanted ward, elemental aversion and either plague splitting grenades or net shot. Whatever you choose to place on the armor the other perk has to go on the blunderbuss so you can have both blunderbuss perks. Small note here is that Plague Splitting Grenades on the Pestilence will only apply Plague if you are holding the blunderbuss when the explosion happens. So if you don't want to wait for that extra time, you can safely put the net shot and put the Plague Splitting Grenades on your armor. Last but not least, on our boots we would like to have the Enchanted Ward, Elemental Aversion and one type of conditional damage as you already have all the necessary other perks. Of course here you can always go for thrust or slash conditioning but if you want to have an extra fire protection that would still work. In all our armors we will slot onyx gems since most of the enemies which we will face will be melee users that are mainly running slash, strike and thrust damage. Note that you don't need to rune glass your gems as you are playing a supporting role and your damage will not increase a lot. It will be better for you to be more tankier than doing a little bit of more damage and therefore that's why we are not using the rune glass on our armors. For weapons we would like to have fire staff with plague crits, keen and incinerate. A good name drop can be found in Elysium Wilds by killing one of the three monkeys. The name of the fire staff is Inflamed Chaos and it drops with Keen and Incinerate. Adding the plague crit should not be a problem, so if you want to go and farm it out, go for it. For jamming the fire staff you definitely have to have Jasper, but it's up to you to decide if you want to rune glass it or not. On paper the rune glass is better as it gives the same amount of bonus at 8% after being hit but unfortunately for the moment it is bugged and it can only stack one time. 
if you want to reach the three stacks of empower you need to go with the regular jasper but i personally prefer to go with the rune glass as i'm constantly doing the damage with the flamethrower so the one stack is already in rotation for secondary as already mentioned you would need the pestilence in order to guarantee that anti-healing effects will be hit on every tick of your flamethrower as mentioned earlier, you want to have one of the perks of the blunderbuss which are the net shot or the plague splitting grenades on your weapon. Many people consider putting a gem on the pestilence as a better option so they can have more damage with it. However, I repeat again, this is a supporting build and you barely use the blunderbuss apart from the putting the nades or using the net shot. Last but not least, we need to go over the jewelry and here are the ones that I'm currently using. For an amulet I'm using Slash Protection, Health and Divine. For Ring I go with Fire Damage, Hearty and Leeching. And for Earring you can use the Endless Thirst by adding Regenerating on it as last perk. If you already have the Endless Thirst in another build of yours, Feel free to just take another regular earring with refreshing toast, fortifying toast and regenerating. This way you can keep your endless thirst for your other build and you would not need to change the last perk for it. I don't like the ank in this build due to the fact that I go with a little bit of self sustain by having leeching on my ring and of course the healing effect from the incinerate. Therefore ank will be playing an opposite role to that and I don't really like it on the build. Now since we know what is required as gear, let's take a quick look over the skill tree of both weapons. For the fire staff we want to have almost all points in the right side of the skill tree. With that distribution you ensure yourself that you will gain the maximum of damage, utility and fortify. From the left side we want just a single passive which is the clear mind as it will give us 5% in power. Since it's on the second row of the skill tree we need to unlock a passive before it by placing a point into fury restoration or spell focus. You also don't want neither of the two ultimate abilities due to the fact that you don't have time for heavy attacks to proc the backdraft and you definitely don't need the rune of Helios. On the blunderbuss side we want to have the classic variation of abilities for the anti-heal build which is including the net shot, blast shot and splitting grenades. Almost all passives on the right side are also necessary in order to unlock the ultimate double down. As we all know this ultimate is needed to have the maximum uptime on our splitting grenades or the net shot for escape or chase potential. Worth mentioning is that the best rune for this build is the Grasping Vines as any other rune will not have the same impact. With all that, have in mind that this is one extremely strong and useful build which will bring a lot of confusion and disruption into the enemy's backlines. People will have to respect you and your presence as if they don't, they might pay for it. Don't forget that you are still not a god and cannot do all by yourself. Playing closer to your bruisers and your party is key as your main goal is to assist them. When you see a potential and you have everything ready, it is always worth to try and make a play on the enemy's backline with a burnout followed by vines and then grenades and incinerate. This will definitely have a huge impact if you let your teammates know a few seconds before so they can assist you with all their abilities. Also don't forget that you are no longer a light mage and you cannot really chase down targets forever. However, your goal is to just to make them run as if they do, they are most likely losing and you are the winner. And with that guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I would appreciate your feedback on the build. If you want to see more stuff related to fire staff and new world, make sure to subscribe to the channel and join my discord community channel which will be linked in the description below. If you want to catch me live stream, you can do that as well by following my channel on kick. Thank you guys once again and I will see you on the next one.